If you love playing the bass at any level, we invite you to experience this colorful history of our instrument. Meet the great teachers, soloists, and entertainers from the jazz, classical, and electric bass world. I'm Barry Green, the bass teacher from Ohio State's new Tamashev Family Music Building. Join me and my co-host Jason Heath for some fun clinics, interviews, and performances from the legends and heroes of our past and present. All right, everyone, pick up your bases and join Barry in the D major scale, funky style. This is the D major scale, two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. It's actually a very easy scale, but most of you don't have a low D or C string. So we're gonna play the D natural, the first note an octave higher starting on your open D string and then we skip down to the E string. If you have an extension or a five string bass, then of course you can play the low D. So we'll start with open D. We're gonna play pizzicato first with D, and then we play open E, first finger F sharp, G, second finger, A, open, B, one, C sharp, lift that first finger, nice high C sharp, open D, Natural first finger all in first position fourth finger F sharp nice and high open G first finger A fourth finger B natural now we have our only shift to C sharp on the G string second finger C sharp fourth finger D's right there back to C sharp now shift back to B natural fourth finger on the G string First finger A, open G, F sharp on the D string, fourth finger of course, E natural, E natural, first finger, open D, C sharp, fourth finger on the A string, B natural, first finger, open A, G, second finger on the E string, first finger F sharp, Open E natural, if you have it, and then go back to the open D string for the last D. Very good. Now let's grab the bow, and let's do that once again. Play along with me. Start with open D, open E, first finger F sharp, second finger G, open A string, first finger B natural, Nice high C sharp, fourth finger, open D, first finger E, fourth finger F sharp, open G string, first finger A natural, fourth finger B natural, and our shift to C sharp, second finger, fourth finger D, back to C sharp, shift back to B natural, A, first finger, open G, scale once again in quarter notes with a video and that's going to be followed with three variations in a funky style. It's going to be a lot of fun. Follow along with the bowings and go for your D major funk.
Jason is going to introduce us to this amazing bass player who has crafted a way to create rhythms and grooves with his hands and the bow. What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and I am so fascinated by what my friend Olivier Babaz does on the bass. It's really fascinating, the sonic language that he explores, whether it's jazz, bowing, or working with the kalimba, or just his creative approach to music in general. Olivier just finished his first jazz bow workshop. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how he explored these topics in that session, the music that he uses. And I think you're going to get a lot of creative inspiration from just seeing how he works. The bow is like a big guitar pick at first. Just use it like you feel. That is such a great way to think about the type of percussive playing or different articulations that he gets. And I just love the spectrum of articulations that Olivier gets out of his instrument with the bow. It really opens my eyes to the possibility of what you can do with the bow in styles that you might associate more with pizzicato playing. Yeah, the more you will do it, the more you will change your technique, for example. But don't hesitate to to experiment with it and to go for it and don't be shy okay here we go olivier's slap bow technique this is a great explanation kind of window inside check out these groovy licks so you got the note on the one the stick on the three and you got the hair um bowing vertically on all the end all right so one that is an intricate move to get under your fingers. That does not come naturally to me, but I've been working on it and I just, I love the sound that you get with that. We know playing the bass isn't just about playing the right notes, but also it includes playing with feelings. Barry is going to introduce a creative exercise to help us channel beautiful feelings inspired by nature. Playing music involves us balancing two factors. One factor has to do with our technical accuracy, and the other factor has to do with our musical inspiration and expression. We want both all of the time, but very often our education system tilts the emphasis as younger players into the accuracy and the technical side. And we don't spend enough time with the discipline of learning how to express feelings, all kinds of feelings. Feelings of passion, of excitement, of power, of love. Let these powerful images inspire you to feel the beauty of nature as you sing or play your bass to the score below these images.
Francois Rabath was born in Syria in 1931 and lived in Paris, where he played and composed his own unique virtuosic music, while also collaborating with popular artists like Ornette Coleman, Jacques Brel, and Michel Legrand. In 1978, after Francois's historic debut in Carnegie Hall, Frank Proto and I invited Francois to come to our International Summer Bass School in Cincinnati. Frank, inspired by Francois' amazing musicianship and unbelievable technique, wrote many concertos and solo pieces for Francois, including this popular Carmen fantasy that you are currently hearing. Francois was eager to share his unique music and technique to the American audience and returned to America every year for summer courses. Barry and George Vance established the Rabath Institute both in Washington, D.C. and Cincinnati and later in California, Hawaii, and Canada. Paul Ellison was the first bassist to study with Francois in his Paris home, followed by Barry and a host of famous bass players from the jazz and classical world, including Hal Robinson, Hans Sturm, Patrick Nair, Nicholas Walker, Renaud Garcia Fons, Ray Brown, Rufus Reed, John Clayton, and endless professionals from around the globe. Rabath has published his new method in five volumes of technique books and two major DVDs. His technique was beyond comprehensive. Imagine a well-known traditional bass method by Samandel offered just one fingering and bowing for a two octave scale. Paul Ellison helped Rabath with his comprehensive third volume of his method and that offered 133 fingerings combined with 282 bowings for this same scale. Wow! I think Raboth is playing notes faster than the ear and the brain could possibly comprehend. Hold on, I believe he's just getting warmed up. This is really insane. He just turned 90 years old and he's still playing this piece. After we recover from that cadenza, let's take a look inside Rabat's technique of the pivot and the crab. The pivot, it's so important that it, you reach three notes, not anymore two, even more. I, I just move my hand like this. Here also, it's smaller and it's bigger. It's, it's, uh, you reach not not just to make it more easy, but in in pitch, because the security are this. I don't move it. I can reach and come back. I don't move it. Uh, C'est une sécurité totale. So, I going to show you how I pivot with my thumb. This is the movement. It's, it's that without moving my hand, I reach one octava. If I change the second position, I can make one octava also.
If I reach the third position, I do the same. Traditionally, when we play alternating scales, we slide. For example, we slide to the node to change position. To avoid shifting, this technique allowed me to do I assure one note, I place the next. In other words, never slide to reach a note. Left the preceding one, place it, and then left while still playing this note, and so on. Hans Sturm has published two amazing DVDs employing multiple angle views of Raboth's bowing and left hand, plus biomechanical images showing the internal movements of the fingers and arms. Hans explains the filming of this project. We have uh, live performances on there. We have interviews where he talks about all kinds of things, uh, nervousness, uh, how to teach, a lot of different aspects. We have the biomechanics animations, we have the lecture, and then we have the lecture demonstrations with the multiple camera angles. And it's, it's a very kind of complete way. You, you can look at his seven families of bow strokes. You can switch, so looking at him from front on as if you're watching a player in a recital. You can uh, look very closely at his bow arm from the front. You can look at his bow arm uh, from the back of the bow arm to see what the hand is doing. And then we got a cherry picker and we had a guy up looking over his shoulder down at his bow arm so you can get a sort of a perspective of what does it look like from the player's perspective as well. With the two hands to equalize. So biomechanics animation is one thing, but I also learned that there is a button on these DVD remote controls called the angle button. Well, it's rarely used, but it turns out that you can do this. If you have multiple cameras shooting simultaneously and they are synced up, then you, in the DVD, you can create the possibility to change angles on the fly as you're watching the DVD. You can choose the angle. And so we shot with a four camera shoot in surround. Thank you, Hans, for these amazing DVDs that help us understand Rabat's approach to the left and right hands, as well as his philosophy of music and inspiring playing. At the 1988 ISB convention in Los Angeles, I heard Francois play this amazing piece called Ritba. It was inspired from his African journey through a hot desert. This music represents the heat waves above the hot desert sand. Soon, a lake in the distance looks like a mirage. And Barry, this is actually the lake called Rekba. At first, Francois Raboth thought that the lake looked like it was surrounded by snow. But we can see it is actually a great salt lake and those are all salt deposits. I was so overwhelmed by the power of this music, I was inspired to go to Paris and plead with Francois to please teach me how to play this piece.
Another one of Francois' compositions is called Breeze. That's truly a remarkable bull hand. favorite evocative pieces inspired by the Iberian Peninsula, performed by the gifted young bassist Dominic Wagner. Dominic was the most recent winner of the International Bratitage Competition. Pushadas employs a punticello technique, allowing the bass to sound like an Indian sitar. The piece was inspired by Ravi Shankar and brilliantly played here by Volkan Orhan. It's one of Raboth's signature pieces that usually opens his live concerts. Its form is a traditional Indian raga that just builds with exciting energy. So much of Francois's music is inspired by nature and his travels. After visiting Venice, Francois was outraged that the city officials had the technology to stop the flooding of one of the world's most unique and beautiful cities, and they couldn't agree on the solution.
So as the city is sinking, by playing this music, we musicians can raise awareness with our art and make a difference in the future of our planet. Francois shows another side of his artistry with electric bassist Steve Bailey and the music of Duke Ellington. Steve, thank you, Barry. Thank you, Jason. See you in the next episode.